Alex Jones claims that the judge in his case is a George Soros operative. We break down his wild comments he made as his Connecticut trial is going on. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Okay, so as you know, we've been covering Alex Jones' trial out in Connecticut. The InfoWars host, the conspiracy theorist, he's been sued by an FBI agent and family members of those killed in the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting for his comments over the years that Sandy Hook was fake, that it was a hoax, that it was staged, that there were crisis actors. And they sued him for defamation, intentional and negligent infliction of emotional distress, invasion of privacy, unfair trade practices. And you know what? They have already won this case. That's right, because the court entered a default judgment against Jones because he basically refused to comply with discovery obligations during the course of this litigation. So the judge automatically ruled against him. And the task for this six-person jury is to decide how much Jones has to pay up and the amount of damages. And this kind of echoes almost the same trial that we saw uh, and covered in Texas over the summer, where Jones was now ordered to pay almost $50 million in damages to the parents of a six-year-old boy that was killed in Sandy Hook. And what the plaintiffs are saying is that Jones knew the story was false. His views and engagement were going up. He kept pushing this story. He kept profiting, uh, profiting off of it. And that these plaintiffs were targeted, harassed, and threatened by Jones supporters, on top of all of the emotional pain of being told that they didn't experience what they experienced. So this is what the case is in Connecticut. And Jones is already in this kind of losing position. Now, I should tell you, Jones hasn't showed up in court yet. He hasn't been in Connecticut. And we believe, though, he will testify and take the stand. Now, typically, defendants in these kinds of cases try to maintain a low profile. They try not to make a lot of statements during the course of the case, but not Alex Jones. You see, Jones decided to sit down for an interview with conservative commentator Stephen Crowder. And boy, oh boy, did he have a lot to say. Let's start with his opinion on the case and also the judge. They will sue you in one of three jurisdictions. As they take over more jurisdictions, they're getting this level of criminal judiciary in. They will sue you in Austin, Texas, Travis County. They will sue you in New York, New York. They will sue you in Washington, D.C. And Austin's famous for indicting Rick Perry when he was governor for vetoing a bill. How do you do that? You don't. I mean, it's in the Constitution that, that it, it's a law that he can veto bills, uh, but they still, it took him two years to beat it and $2 million. Tom DeLay, totally legally raising money, indicted him criminally. Well, now what they do is they do a default. So they sue you in, in one of these key jurisdictions they control, if you're dumb enough to live in one of them, but still, they'll still just do it in D.C. and make you go there. They'll sue you in the jurisdiction where the judge assigns they control and who's a political operative, this lady's a Soros operative, admits she has her own, you know, Facebook. They will then pick the judge, sue you, and then for years say, we want your discovery, and each time say, this isn't it. We want more. We want your bank accounts. We want the emails. We want the text messages. And then when you give them everything, they say, you're defaulted. You didn't give us anything. And now they go and have a jury trial on how guilty you are. So you're not innocent until proven guilty. You're not you're not uh, guilty until proven innocent. You are guilty until proven how guilty. Honestly, I have to tell you, there's so much to break down here. I'm not even sure where to begin. But let's start with the fact that this isn't about Jones being found guilty. Okay, neither the Connecticut case nor the Texas trial is about guilt. It's about liability. A criminal case is about a guilty verdict. Cases like this are about liability. So, yes, he was found liable in Texas. He was found liable in Connecticut for the various claims, like I mentioned. And as he claims, he says he lost. He was automatically found guilty, air quotes, because really he didn't comply with discovery obligations. He didn't turn over everything that he was supposed to. There's a difference between making legal arguments for why certain material shouldn't be handed over to the other side versus what he did, which is just not handing it over, which is just not complying because you can't do that. You can't just refuse to do something, especially when the court instructs you to do so. And he claims that he did turn everything over, but that's not true. And he also talks about that how they'll, they'll sue in specific places. Well, let's just take that back for a second. Litigants can forum shop, right? They can look at beneficial uh, places to sue, but they can find beneficial venues, but they can't just sue 
anywhere that they want to sue, there has to be some sort of minimal contacts, minimal connection to that jurisdiction to sue there. You know, Texas is where Jones lives, where InfoWars is operated. Connecticut is obviously where Sandy Hook happened, where the families are from. So th- he's wrong about that. And also, you just can't pick a judge like he claims. They're usually, it happens at random, a judge is selected or appointed. And I'll tell you what, my colleague Aaron Keller wrote a great piece on this on lawandcrime.com that further explains this. But just to move on here, he also claims, Alex Jones, that the judge is a Soros operative. And I can't say it's entirely clear which judge he's referring to, either the judge in the Texas trial, Maya Gamble, or the one in Connecticut, Barbara Bellis. But obviously, he's referring to this longstanding theory that billionaire George Soros is the mastermind behind this global criminal enterprise. But, you know, I got to ask, why does he think this? He said Soros operative. She admits it on her Facebook. That's the kind of stuff where people will say, well, she doesn't say I'm a Soros operative. What do you mean by that? Because that's the kind of thing the media will take out of context and say, Alex Jones says that she said on her Facebook she's a Soros operative, and that's not true. Therefore, everything else he said is Well, if you go there, she's got purple-blue hair and has all these Soros-funded PACs on the site, and she gets money out of the PACs uh, that are funded by Soros, just like the Austin DA is famous for letting people that shoot people out of jail the next day. Right. Like up here in Fort Worth, I mean— I mean, you know there's over a 1,000 DAs and county attorneys that Soros literally bankrolled. Yes. And they, and they take well, – well, Austin is a Soros bastion. Right. Uh, and so judges are elected there. Uh, they're financed by these PACs that he funds uh, and with a bunch of other money. But, I mean, you can actually go dig that out. Uh, yeah, I know, but she didn't say I'm a fo- no, Soros right. operative. Because so the media, well, you know, the, that's the kind of stuff. She did not say I am a Soros operative. You are correct. Right, and you don't know if Soros paid for her blue hair dye. We cannot confirm nor deny, but we'll assume so. Uh, so let me ask you this, because I didn't want, I have to be careful, obviously, because. No, no, trial, you're absolutely right. But I that want, was I hyperbole want by me. It's amazing. It, it's literally amazing. Now, I'll tell you, the funniest part about this is that Crowder right at the end says, oh, we have to be careful because I know you're going to trial. We have the trial going on. And Jones says hyperbole. It's funny because in Jones's Texas trial, as the trial was going on, He went on InfoWars and made fun of the jury and the plaintiffs, and there was a segment on his site that had the judge in flames and said that she was working with child sex traffickers. So on the one hand, he really didn't learn his lesson by going on Crowder's show in the middle of this trial, but because especially like like it happened in Texas, they could play this interview when he's on the stand in Connecticut. They could say, you claim to take this trial seriously, like they said in Texas, but yet you're going on his show and saying all these things. On the other hand, you could also say, well, maybe Jones has learned something because he has enough sense to protect himself by saying that he's talking in hyperbole and he's exaggerating and maybe he shouldn't be taken seriously. But then Jones does his own version of a recap of what happened to him in Texas. Let's walk through the show trial. Okay. So we have a two-week trial on damages and the headlines are alex jones found guilty of defamation and personal infliction of harm because that's where you get the bigger money by a judge you have to read the bottom of the article to say she found me you know guilty then she instructs the jury i'm guilty then she instructs my lawyer that he can't really talk or go any of these dozens of places in pre-trial and morning uh, special hearing she has where she turns off the internet feed and doesn't let you see what's happening. She kept constantly doing that, uh, of the internet streaming of it. And then once that happens, then they, she instructs the jury that I'm guilty. They ask for $150 million. They put this uh, so-called financial expert on who'd been given our actual finances, who'd been given our federally sworn bankruptcy filing about, here's what we have, here's the real money that's there. Didn't look at it. We weren't allowed to even cross-examine him or ask him any questions that, quote, weren't in their evidence. Was the, the guy who looked like he had a dead mink on his head? The guy that looked like Thurston Howell, the 80th. Exactly. Yes, yes exactly. Oh, Buffy, yes. And so he gets up there and calls me Genghis Khan, and I'm the greatest businessman ever, and I'm so evil, and my company's worth $130 million, and I'm worth $260 million. And so the jury told Reuters later, the jury forewoman, well, we didn't think he deserved to be wiped out and, and got rid of for his, quote, mistake. So we only gave each plaintiff, the man and woman, 10% of his wealth. Well, what they thought they gave him was way more than the wealth I had, even if even if it was $47 million 
or uh, and there's different calculations, but but the maximum allowable that you would be paying is five point six million. Five point six million. But see, that's the thing is, in other words, does the New York Times know that? Yes. Do all of these other outlets reporting on that? No. Do they know that? Yes. They do know but that. But they want the headline. You owe whatever it is, fifty million, sixty million, whatever the headline was exactly, the exact amount, even though they know that that's not accurate, because they want it to be seen as a bigger victory. Uh, exactly. It's, it it's lie after lie after lie. Now I think he might be referring to law and crime and the streaming, but I'm not entirely sure anyway so again it was the judge who found jones liable not not guilty right and the reason she instructed the jury about that is because she's supposed to that's their job the liability portion of this case has already been decided she has to tell them what their job is which is basically just to decide how much to they are going to decide in damages and when he says that his lawyer wasn't allowed to make arguments of course when you lose by default judgment, you can't say that you're innocent. You can't say that you didn't defame anyone. You can't say that you didn't intend to do this. That's already been decided. So he can't say that. Of course, of course, his side can't bring that up. He might see it as unfair. He might see it as the system out to get him, but that's not the case at all. He lost for not participating in the litigation, and that's just what happens. You can't then make arguments. And the media... The media is reporting the damages about $49.3 million because that's what the jury award was. It hasn't been decided how much Jones will actually have to pay, so they're reporting the number. And he's right. There is a cap in Texas on punitive damages, and so that number could be much less. But again, that question is still being litigated, so he, he can't really hit the media on saying, why are they reporting such a large number? Because that's the number as it is right now. But moving on. We can't forget that he's really on Crowder's show to talk about his book. Let's listen. Okay, you've had a year. I want to get into it. And you kind of tell me what we can and what we can't get into, obviously. Uh, but uh, this is your new book, The Great Reset, The War for the World. Yes, and, and it, it went to number one on a whole bunch of charts, went to number two on Wall Street Journal and a bunch of others. And, and that's even with some rigging. It should have been number one there. And the New York Times talked to Tony Lyons the head of Skyrus Publishing, and said, it's Alex Jones, we're not even going to list it. So there were books that were like number 19, 15, you name it, on the New York Times bestseller list that, that we sold 10, 15, 20 times more books than those. So we should have been number one, but stuff way down their list, we sold dozens of times more. And that's just in the first month of its sale at cash registers at stores. That's how that happens. It doesn't count all the massive amounts that got sold online at Amazon or Infowars.com. And so it is the number one book, not just... Uh, fiction, not just nonfiction, all of them more than any textbook, any more than any Harry Potter book, The Great Reset and the War for the World, number one, showing that freedom and liberty is very, very popular. People want to understand what Klaus Schwab and the globalists are up to. Last time I was on, we talked a lot about The Great Reset. There's a lot of great, great reset books out there, but this this really is in their own words. Very easy book to write because it, it, it's really... Uh, their confession of what they're setting up. And so it definitely scares the power structure. That's why they try to suppress me and censor me because the real Alex Jones is popular versus the straw man they're trying to build. Wow. What we can say, and this is according to Mediate, is they say, quote, according to Publishers Weekly, Jones's book sold over 30,000 copies within the first week of its release in August. The Great Reset currently sits at number 17 in the Amazon bestseller category and number one in their globalization category. Jones claims to have sold many copies on Infowars.com, but the data for that is private, and no evidence has been made public by Jones to show that this book surpassed the Harry Potter book sales in sales. Yeah, so he might be exaggerating a bit, but I will tell you why this is interesting and how this can play into this case. There is a question of why is Jones about to take the stand in Connecticut? Because he's so limited in his defense. Like I said, he can't say he's innocent. He can't even say that he didn't profit off of Sandy Hook coverage because he was sanctioned by the court on day one of this trial for not turning over a document showing InfoWars web traffic. Traffic. So the judge said, since you didn't turn this over, as a result, you can't say that you didn't profit off of Sandy Hook. He can't make that defense. So if he really can't defend himself, he really can't say anything, what is he going to take the stand for? Why is he doing it? There is an argument that could be made that he's testifying not so much for the jury, but for his base, his supporters. Turn the court into a theater. Once again, get more people to listen to him, get more people to buy his products, to donate. Because you have to think that with this damages award in Texas and what could be an even bigger award in Connecticut, since there's more plaintiffs and there's no cap on punitive damages, he may need the money. He may need the support. 
But he has to be very careful when he's on the stand because if he starts saying stuff that he's not supposed to, if he crosses the line, the judge has already warned his attorney that she will hold Jones in contempt of court. And thanks, everybody, for tuning into Sidebar. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We very much appreciate it. I'm Jesse Weber. We'll speak to you next time.